உங்களுக்காக காத்திருக்கும் பிறந்திருக்கும் நீங்க எப்ப வேற ஊர்லேருந்து வரவங்க எப்ப மதுரையை கிராஸ் பண்ணாலும் சரி யூ ஆர் ஆல்வேஸ் மோஸ்ட் வெல்கம் டு பெட்மா காலேஜ் எக்ஸப்ட் டூரிங் த நைட் நோடி வில் ஹியர் அண்ட் ஐ வாண்ட் டு ஷேர் தட் வேற வேர் வி மே லீவ் வாட் எவர் வீ ஹவ் லேர்ன் வாட் எவர் இஸ் கியர் டு அவர் ஹார்ட்ஸ் இஸ்ரேல் ரிமைன்ஸ் even after many years this is my experience when i went around to different places very specially for creating the chapters nationally and internationally romba recent ah nanga may madam kadaisi varathile dubai poyirundhom appa angulla idu enoda experience for the past few years and the alumni vanda avanga share pannadhu the very thing that they hear the name fatima they get a new energy new happiness new love in their hearts appa fatima la nda vandu ko idu organize pandrom nam ella onna varaporom in the name of fatima college appo you get up again avurude feelings like eppadi express pannangire enak ipo express panna theriyala so it is a nostalgia so both those who have completed recently and also in the
in our surroundings, in the world that we live. That is what I pray in Sanskrit in that prayer. This is one of the things I learnt in Fatima College. Before I get into the, the main uh, subject that I want to address on, I would like to place my heartfelt gratitude to Mother Rose who thought of starting this great institution in those days when as rightly Dr. Raghav mentioned, women education was not even thought about. Right? It was there in a different way. Every household had its women learning. They were all great scholars like Maitreyi, Gargi, so many women scholars were there. But an institutionalized women's education, it was there at let's say high school level. But at college level, to become a graduate, not many could do it because of the cost or whatever. And Mother Rose, though being a foreigner, she thought of instituting this Fatima College here. And I don't know what made her decide of Madurai to start this. And she started it. And uh, my heartfelt gratitude had this institution been not there. I am sure I wouldn't have become a graduate because those days every family was almost a lower middle class family. Not like today when parents are getting to even uh, sell their kids to send their child to education. You know like 90% like people were middle and I mean uh, below average financial status. So only there is an educational institution within the place where they live, they would send their children for study. So my heartfelt gratitude once again to Mother Rose and all the sisters who started this institution and the organization in support today. And I must put my, uh, you know, heartfelt gratitude to Miss Shakuntala. I don't know how many uh, alumni who studied under her or they. Please put your hand. My eyes are thirsting to see them. So she was like a giant. You know, like the way she walked on the campus, it will command respect. It is not that she came and spoke to everyone, threatened or anything, but her, just her personality. When you see her, you will learn so many things just by seeing her. She taught us punctuality, discipline, being committed, being loyal, doing hard work. Did she come and teach each one of us like that? Just by being herself, being the principal of this institution, she has learned. And I had the good fortune of interacting with her on multiple occasions because I was one of the uh, Bharatanatyam dancer and a very keen missing uh, quiz club member and also Commerce Association president. I would like my young girls to pay attention because it's with a lot of love and gratitude we are sharing this. Yeah, so like you know, so I had occasion to interact with her. Her key interest on art, culture, tradition was seen in those interactions. She would select a song and she would say, why don't you dance for this? It will be a very difficult song. I wouldn't have learned it or known it. But the fact that she told me to dance for it, I made her earth and sky. Why? Those who have been my inspiration, my department of science, which is my home, and all the friends who remember me then. Thank you. Uh, I think Uma explained beautifully the journey of a student in Fatima College. I don't want to go back to my memories, um, but I would like to tell one or two things. Um, that, that is what we have to look forward to. I hope for each one of you um, who are here, remember that one, one of the most important part of our lives is that we can be social change champions. We can and that is the journey each of us start when we leave at our college. What Uma said was true. When we leave this college, we actually first time realize how protected this place was. How
how how welcoming this place was, how much we took things for granted. That is, I took for granted. Okay, there were days when I thought I want to uh, change the world, and there were days when I knew that I was not so good at all. But my department and my college was always behind me. Particularly, my department was the place where I went back again and again to ensure that my energy is restored. And uh, when I walked out into the society, one thing I realized is the stories people tell us. The first, most of the stories that are told to me was, oh, you are a student of home science, so you are getting ready to be a housewife. And I looked at this and what? Yeah, in my agenda of life that is there, but not that is what the journey I was trying to make. And in the Department of Home Science, I have learned so many things. It talked about sociology, psychology, it talked about food and nutrition and design as a concept. And none of them even remembered all of that. They thought I was getting ready to become a homemaker or a housewife. That is the story people believe. And there are numerous such stories people believe. There are people who said that Fatima College is strict, you can't enjoy life there. But I don't remember any of that because we had fun in this place. Amazing fun. We broke every rule and we were pampered. <laughs> we were allowed to do all the stupid stuff and we were never looked down as stupid people. Okay. And we had super fun. And we were the coolest kids out there. And that's Fatima. So there are stories out there we will tell. And as a head of uh, human resources in organizations, I, I tend to see the underbelly of the organization. When I say underbelly, the micro the organization is a micro of a macro. So people from outside in the society come into organizations to work and they carry the macro's underbelly, which is anxieties, envy, the competition, all of that. That is the underbelly. When I say we, we are champions of social order, I only want all of you to remember, whether it is in organizations or families, there is all of this that happens. You know, the anxieties, the, the envy, the hatred, the looking at other people as other who is not similar to us. So the stories that are told to us. Now the question for us is the education we get here and we go out is to see can we change the story? In this, can we change the social order? Can we stop scripting that social order? It is a simple thing, even the simpler. You don't have to be making a mega plan, but can you start with someone who is a helper in your house to find out whether they have a bank account? Do they have an insurance to support? Okay. From a social order change starts from there. Your ability to look at every small thing and redefining it. I think this is particularly a women's college. I think women have an enormous tendency to make a social difference. And it starts with family as a system. If we are able to think and be generous with each other, magnanimous with each other, kind with each other, I think you become better humans when you go into organizations and do that. I think that's the only message I want to leave with people because it is not a question of how did a home science person end up with a job in human resources? Because fundamentally home science also has a subject about sociology and psychology. And for me, human resources is an amalgamation of anthropology, sociology and psychology. That's where human resources is all about. And it has an overlay of economics and political science. Okay? But that, that fundamentally is what is when I go into organizations, look at organizations, look at the society, the social system and the family system. I first I always look at the stories we tell each other. That if you are a commerce, you have to become an auditor. If you are a home science, you have to become an housewife. All these funny stories we tell each other. And the stories we tell our daughters and sons. If you are a daughter, this is what you have to do. If you are a son, this is what you have to do. And the stories we tell ourselves. I think looking at the stories we tell, can we go back and say, can I tell a different story? Can I be a change champion in this world? Can I be a social change agent in this world? If someone has started this college so many years back, in a city which that, that person is not even known about, then that is the biggest social change, isn't it? 
can you look at all of those examples and go back and say what is the social change can I make in my family system, in the social system I am part of, so that organizations become better. The world order is, is ensuring that your family system actually is more secure. We are kind to each other in families. You can't expect someone to be kind in an organization if you come from a, in a family which is not kind. So can we teach our children, teach each other to be kind? Can we be kind to ourselves? Can we be generous with our praise? Can we empathize other people? How will you talk about equality and equity when you don't have that in the house and you don't have that in the society? It is so fun. It is such a joke then. So can we look at kindness, empathy, generosity as things that we look at and work with for a change in the society that we are part of, in the families we are part of? Okay. How do you treat your daughter-in-law? How do you treat your mother-in-law? How do you treat your parents? How do you treat your brother? How do you treat your sister? When you pass a comment about another woman in a society, just before passing a comment, I, this, these are the things that are interest me as a human resource person because these are the things that actually influence behavior in organizations. The prejudice, the anxieties, the biases, all of that people exhibit in an organization comes from the society they come from. And we have a chance to make the change. And I feel women have are very powerful change agents if they put their mind to it. And that's the only message I want to leave. Because in these corridors, I have not dreaming of changing the world. I don't think I have changed much the world. But I definitely feel that it has always questioned me on the path I chose the day that I left that world. I will do something good with my life. And that's the question I keep asking myself. Will I have done good enough? Good? Is it enough? Can I do my job? And thank you for being that institution that inspired me always. Where the thirst becomes unquenchable. 
लाइक पनेंगे, सब्सक्राइब पनी, बेल आइकॉन मरकाम क्लिक पनेंगे, शेयर पनेंगे। थैंक्स फॉर वाचिंग।